This is Red Essay, Dispositions of an Urban Cherokee. My name is Brandon Caruso. I'm a citizen of the Cherokee Nation. Season 2 of Red Essay brings Native leaders from all over the country to share their insights, their work, and how to transcend just being a citizen of your tribe. It's a place where you too can find out the secrets to success in the worlds of community leadership, politics, academia, and much more. Honestly, it's got a lot of gems I think you're going to enjoy. So without further ado, enjoy Red Essay Season 2. Welcome back to another season of Red Essay. It's been almost two years and I'm uh, happy to be back. Thank you out there for those of you who kept listening, sending me emails, and uh, I've been getting a lot of requests as, you know, when we're going to pick this back up and I, I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it took me a long time because it was important to me to put out a quality product and I'm really happy to introduce the season and to kick it off with Principal Chief Chad Smith. We had the opportunity to sit down and talk a little bit about the importance of knowing where you're at and where you want to be. And he refers that to getting from point A to point B and how it's really an honor and a duty to lead. Uh, He's also going to be talking about establishing satellite communities outside of the Cherokee Nation and the challenges for uh, what it takes to mature, not only as a group or even an individual, but as a nation and what that means Uh, and how organizations will take on the character of their leader. And he's going to be wrapping it up with the differences between running a business and a political organization. So enjoy this first episode of Red Essay Season 2, Chief Chad Smith on Cherokee Leadership. My name is Chad Smith, and I was Principal Chief between 1999 and 2011. And when I first took office, it had to ask two questions. One is, what is the Cherokee Nation? And two was uh, where should it go and I understood the the value of those questions on day one but I really didn't realize until just recently how those two questions create the challenge of leadership because when at the Cherokee Nation we uh, we took over in a time of great turmoil the constitutional crisis just occurred there was all sorts of havoc chaos mismanagement lostness basically and so we brought in consultants and they would have their own language they'd have their own four quadrants and they would have their own analysis and most of it was very good but the problem is is that every time one would come in we would try to learn their frame of reference their language and our staff would basically forget it and so it became too complicated and over a period of time I've come to realize that it needs to be very simple needs to be very goal-oriented. So we evolved a philosophies of leadership of going from point A to point B, where you're at to where you want to go. And it became very interesting because if people understood where the nation was going, if you could get 70, 80 percent of the people lined up where they're headed all the same directions, it's amazing where the organization could go. So those first two questions I asked in 99 really evolved to be the foundation of how we wanted to build a nation. Everybody asked where they're at, and then very be, be very, very clear as to where they wanted to go. And those are not easy questions. You know, the where you're at, what is the Cherokee Nation, where do you start, takes a tremendous amount of humility. You have to know yourself, your environment, other people, how you fit in, your moment in time and history. And then the other one is probably even more difficult, is where do you want to go? If you can't articulate in 10 words or less what your product is, what your goal is, where you want the nation to go, where you want your family to go, what you want to be, then you've missed the point. And so, after a while, you know, it took a couple of years for us to ask that very difficult question. Then it became that epiphany that the light went on. And the value and the product and the design purpose of the Cherokee Nation was to become a happy and healthy people. And isn't that the challenge and opportunity of all great civilizations? How tough was it to devise those inner uh, inner steps, the steps in between point A to point B, to, to make sure that you're on track? Well, see, here's the whole thing about leadership, is that everybody's a leader. Webster's definition is to convey or take on the way. And so if you engage and challenge everybody in the organization, uh, and let them know they're a leader, that they're responsible. They have to lead themselves, their family, their community, and their nation. 
And that's why these communities here in Orange County and other places are so critical. Because if you define the Cherokee Nation as a family of family and a community of communities, each family has to be healthy and happy. Each community has to be healthy, healthy and happy. And the challenge we have nowadays is that often we think that somebody else is responsible for our happiness and healthiness. And it's they're not. Right. Sure, <laughs> Only us. Sure. And so when we become happy and healthy and self-motivated, go toward this great goal, uh, as a nation, we should also as communities and as families. And I think that's our greatest challenge is for people to begin to realize not only is it their duty, but it's their honor and responsibility to be engaged, to direct them their own life, to direct their lives of their family, direct uh, uh, the lives of the community and the nation. And when I mean direct, it's not authoritarian. It's to coax and to lead by example. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned that everybody has their role as, as a leader to take care of themselves, um, which I completely agree. Actually, matter of fact, just yesterday I was on my way home from uh, San Francisco uh, and I was listening to a podcast, and it was about a gentleman uh, who uh, was a, he, uh, uh, he was Hindi, and he talked about how important it is to love yourself mm-hmm. and uh, put yourself even before family and in any other relationships. Because in the end, if you, uh, as he said, um, poison your own well, mm-hmm. and toxic yourself, it's right. you're not going to do any benefit towards uh, the, your relationships, especially in your family. Sure. Can you talk about a little bit about uh, your uh, work early on in the early 2000s with the uh, uh, Cherokee communities and establishing them? Well, if you take the, the uh, premise that the nation is a community of communities, of uh, a community is a, we can have two kinds of community, a place community and a community of interest. And so many of our Cherokees had to leave Oklahoma. In fact, my dad left in 1950 to look for work, ended up in Denver. But Cherokees congregate in place and they congregate in interest. And so for the nation to be healthy and to sustain itself for the long term, you really had to have not only place communities in Oklahoma within the Cherokee Nation, but place communities where that community of interest could grow outside. And so we began with Julia Coates. There were several organized, uh, principally in, in Albuquerque, but we became the effort to organize uh, at-large communities all across the country, wherever there were Cherokees. And the whole idea was to sort of seed that challenge and let them grow and let them develop leadership and let them define themselves and and, uh, go through that process and become stronger and and look at the things that interest them first, if it's uh, art or history or culture or genealogy. Because any of those were great first steps, and as you got involved, it's sort of like, for me, is when we started our history class in 1991, I asked uh, Wilma Mankiller if I could do this class because we really didn't know where we were from, we didn't know where we were going. I thought it would be helpful for our middle management. And so when I started, it was like that old Lay's potato chip commercial. You just couldn't eat one. You got one bite of history and another bite, and it became so fascinating because it was horrific. I mean, for example, in 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 1939, Congress passed an act giving $50,000 to uh, Tennessee, North and South Carolina, and Georgia to celebrate 100 years of peace with the Indians. Oh, my word. (laughs) Well, yeah, there was peace with the Indians because they got rid of them all. They died on the Trail of Tears. And you start seeing that, and things became very vibrant. And the more vibrant they became, it became evident that that we had been gifted a legacy. It was our turn to step up and do something good or great. And so the the at-large communities was an effort to let them take that one first bite of the Lay's potato chip be engaged and in, in grow on their own. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And in your book, you mentioned diversity leads opportunity for, for leadership. Mm-hmm. And what were your experiences when you were first reaching out to these communities? And you know, what were their thoughts on you know, where the Cherokee Nation was? And how were you able to kind of steer that in the right direction? Well, I think we're all in the challenge of maturing. Uh, 
uh, uh, this one little story is that uh, it actually origin in from our boarding school in Sequoia. And so I challenged our staff, says, what is your product? What is your goal? What is your point B? Mm -hmm. And some said, well, graduate kids and such and such. And it became evident the success of our product is was measured 10 years after graduation. Our alumni, what were they doing? Sure. Were they self-reliant? Were they taking care of their family? Were they contributing back uh, to the nation? Or would, did they have social service problems, you know, methamphetamine or alcohol or broken families or uh, addictions or abuse? Mm -hmm. And so the product wasn't the graduation. It was the young citizens that were created because of their education in, at Sequoia. We ask our bilingual staff, said, here's a kid, he's 28 years old, he's been out of high school 10 years, he's got a great family, he's contributing, he's, I mean, he's, he's taking care of his parents and taking care of his kids, he's engaged and he's happy. What would you call that 28 year old? And these, there were two different groups and they came back in a couple of weeks and they came back with the word for mature. Okay. And mature. <laughs> so another one of those epiphanies, and that we're all in that growing mode to mature. Right. The sure. nation has to mature. Our families have to mature, and these communities have to mature. So they mm -hmm. they begin at that starting place, and the process of getting to where we want to go is uh, is actually maturing. Yeah. And so and that's why it's so important for each of these communities to design their own destiny, to go through the struggles. You know, when you have small organizations, you get into power struggles and people looking at each other crosswise and hurt feelings and such. Sure. But that's the process of growing a community, growing leadership, uh, that we rise above that. We mature. Yeah. And right now the Cherokee Nation is in the throes of great turmoil. Uh, yeah, sure, because it's a trickle-down effect. You know, if there's turmoil up top, it's inevitably going to come down eventually to the communities. You know, and one of the key things that you mentioned was being able to touch these uh, communities and, and giving them the tools to su sustain themselves. And if you can take that idea of uh, 10 years after somebody graduates, mm -hmm. you know, how are they looking at and apply it to one of the communities, how would you say we're looking uh, thus far with being able to sustain ourselves? You know, of course, there's some objective measures you know, attendance at participation, at the meetings, you know, the dynamics of their meetings, the, the things that are being learned, almost like a lesson plan, you know. Sure. And there's there's probably five or six bodies of knowledge that we should all be growing, you know, our history, our language, our culture, our art, our music, our genealogy, uh, service to each other, service to the nation. You know, if, if you were to design a community, what would it look like in 10 years from now? 50% uh, of the registered Cherokees in this uh, area attending each meeting. You have open and uh, honest discussion about political issues. Right. You would have people articulating and debating history and its interpretation. You would have art shows where not only the young but the old and are, are displaying great interpretations of not only history but uh, the present and the future that is, that's accurate. It's not Pan Indian, it's not Southwest or plain stuff, but it really yeah. grasps the, uh, uh, the the values of uh, this has made us unique. You try to go back to the same very simple philosophy of going from point A to point B. If you can articulate where you want to go, mm -hmm. then the next step is to articulate the principles that you'll make a decision. And then the rest of it is actually pretty academic. It, you just follow your principles. Steps. Does it take us where we want to go? If it does, yes. If it doesn't, no. Right. I think that's beautiful because it's so simple, mm -hmm. but it's fundamental. You know? And I, I think we we miss out on that. And, I, and we can struggle with the other things, you know, the accounting and the procurement and all that kind of stuff. Those are technical tools to help us. But if we always can remember where we want to go, right. uh, the rest of it seems to work itself out. Right. I can't say I know a whole lot about what's going on with uh, Cherokee Nation business, other than the fact that uh, we've you know, exponentially grown and, and done some really great things. But um, it seems like we've been able to follow that 
simple fundamental rule of you know uh, putting money back into the community and what do, what would you see in the near future for casinos and healthcare well see here's there's an adage and I never believed that this be as true as I have come to in the last year or two but organizations take on the character of their leader sure. so if you look at Cherokee Nation businesses four years ago the leaders were the board of directors and these were world-class CEOs you had Dave Tippeconic was number one at Sitco Cherokee and Comanche you had Adolf Lichtenberger number two Cherokee at uh, uh, Sitco you had retired people from Williams and from others very successful business guys mm -hmm. they knew corporate governance they knew how to make a decision and so everything they did was rational was far-sighted uh, was well thought out sure. and it was a good decision well now they've all been removed and what you have is basically cronies and they may be nice people but they haven't had the experience they don't have the knowledge and they make political decisions and so what's going to happen to the organization it'll there's a lot of great staff that will carry it but at some time it's going to start disintegrating and devolving into uh, a political organization and no business can run as a political organization right yeah and that makes a lot of sense how can you run a business when every four years and you have to really you know there could be some some big turnover you need something much longer than, than that you know political term right you see a lot some of this board of directors under my tenure they left because they could foresee uh, what was coming and they didn't want their reputations tarnished, you know. They served the nation uh, because they enjoyed the challenge and the opportunity to contribute. But they weren't willing to do their, that at the risk of tarnishing their professional their professional reputation when that organization turns sour. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. You know, it's, um, it affects us. We all want to see uh, our, our Cherokee Nation flourish and, and do very well. And, that's one of the uh, unifiers that I see between the 22 at-large communi communities. Uh, it's hardly the, um, the speculated what, what do you want question. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more of, um, you know, how can we be connected and, you know, where can our, our money and efforts go, you know, sure. in, within the Cherokee Nation, um, which is why I, uh, I really stand by the, the efforts like CallNet to, to be able to get on the same page and, and begin a, uh, you know, a long-lasting uh, mm -hmm. uh, communication, you know, that, that will outlast uh, any administration, right? Sure. Yeah. Everybody has a duty and a responsibility to be a leader, to be engaged, but also they have that honor uh, to pick up where ancestors left off and do as well or better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Chief. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to another episode of Red Essay. Special thank you to Chief Chad Smith, Principal Chief of the Cherokee Nation, for over a decade. Make sure to read his book, Leadership Lessons from the Cherokee Nation. Be sure to tune in next episode of Red Essay. We're pleased to have uh, guest speaker Tanya Armanderis. She's the uh, founder of the CallNet Cherokee at Large Leadership Network. And she's not only hugely a leader in her own community, but has taken a role to really step up and organize all the Cherokee at large communities nationwide. And she'll be talking a little bit about the organization of CallNet, uh, what it's been able to achieve thus far, and uh, the future for the at large Cherokee communities. So be sure to tune in and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.